also a beautiful artist of John Bill Fox, Peter Barrett, is one of the great practices of the Course of Scribes. Books of ours are essentially credible, but certainly it's the age of quantification. They are the most popular books of the best ever written. This was due in part because they assisted the individual in establishing a more immediate spiritual relationship with God without the intercession of course. And in part because the Bible could be customized by writing this attractive text as one piece and by celebrating the calendar of feast days to seek what city of Israel was the favorite local of particular Judean saints. The Gospel was commissioned by John the Cross. Prince of the House of Bethlehem, Duke of Berlin and Bethlehem, and Count of Bethlehem, who is also the son, friend, and uncle of the successor kings of France. He lived his long life in turbulent times, with the hundred years of war ever since him, and on occasion of his life. Like most of his close relatives, he was driven by his personal ambition and vivacity as a person, but he was not especially gifted in other pursuits of his life. Patricious, avaricious, imperious, and self-absorbed, he was to all accounts not a particularly nice man. He was, however, one of the greatest preachers of all time. A collector of palaces and sanctuary, exotic menageries, gems, and antiquities, works of art of gold and enamel, fine textiles, tapestries, and wall hangings, sculptures and paintings, but above all, a collector of manuscripts, which beyond the interest chambers was the body of science. Belzer was eliminated by the Duke of Limburg, who came from Bangor to the Netherlands, but immigrated to France as an adolescent. When they were engaged by the Duke of Berry in 1404, the youngest was about 15 and the oldest about 15. Needless to say, they must have been people to see him, but it had been a contractual destination. They eliminated the Belzer between 1405 and 1408 or 1409, the only man Continued working for the Duke on the trade issues, Madame Le Chateau was not to do. The Holland officials of the Duke wanted to know strenuous images to come back from the Indigenous. After completing some 30 eliminations, all three brothers were struck down, perhaps by the foe, in 1468, leaving the youngest to unfit. The Duke died in the same year, perhaps for the same cause. The Dalsbury was distinguished from all other books of ours of its time by the addition of seven pictorial series comprising four pages of original. These novel cycles of fifty book insertions, which range in length from three to twelve pages, and have been dispersed throughout the manuscript, have nothing to do with the conventional book of ours. What I would like to do is first begin to argue on how they evolved and then to demonstrate at least one way the Lindbergh brothers through compositional devices called malefic coherency to these picture cycles. All of the picture cycles are devoted to subjects that must have held particular resonance for the group. They are all as follows on the main slide. First, the St. Catherine, who is renowned as a scholar, with the added appeal that he is beautiful and noble. The favorite of the Belvoir princes, she has appeared as prominent as two more times in the Belvoir. Then comes the institution of the Great Litany, which tells that the prayers offered up by Pope Gregory the Great to find Mary during the outburst of prayer. The choice of this cycle may have reflected lingering anxiety over the catastrophic wildfire of 1548, but it may also have been something that was very precedent on the part of the Duke. Next is the story of the theologian Piaget. Who shouts from the grave inspired St. Bruno to visit the Nicholas City of Paris and found the Carthusian writings there in the mouth of the Duke of Berry. The Carthusians were particularly patronized by the Duke and by his brothers of equal privilege. Next, we have an account of how Heraclius, whose mother and Empress Helena founded the Duke of Berry, and returned as greatest of all writers to Jerusalem. The Duke may well have identified with Heraclius. John de Berry was ever on a zealous friend for objects of worship in the Holy Presence. The longest of the cycles 
is the brother of the saint who wrote, who was the translator of the Bible. This past month, he was following the Bible, and it made me want to put the trust on for the field of the field. St. Jerome is followed by the history of saints Paul and Anthony, who went through the strong corruption of life in favor of the spiritual existence of the world. There are many scary dramatic lives. Many have called the dramatic or appeals to the Jews in his own lifestyle, which is too important to have to be completely confused. Finally, there is a brief account of the life of St. John the Baptist. As one of the Jews taking St. Disciple of the Son, the Jews said, These picture book cycles were not introduced to the manuscript as a fully developed concept, and the idea seems to have evolved. The St. John the Baptist cycle, for example, is not a subject of independent description, rather, it is an alteration of the original format of the existing gathering. Most of the gatherings in the Bible comprise four sheets of one folio, folded into one another, so that each gathering has eight photographs, with a rectangle of the of the 16 pages. These gatherings were sent together in the morning, and then back into the book. To ensure that the find of seven the gatherings in the correct order, the scribe would pen a word at the end of the gathering, here, which would have seen one of the These cast words are the first words of the next gallery of the seat, thus establishing the order. The John the Baptist cycle actually falls in a series of masses, a mass to the birth of a new disciple. The mass that included the St. John the Baptist begins with the text under the illumination of the Psalm presented by Holy Apostles, as a text to a missing disciple that John had recently been betrayed. This illumination is preceded by three letters from a story episode to one of the saints. The illumination of Solomon presenting the head of the Baptist has a two column text, the format of the original campaign, while the remaining illuminations are four single lines of alternating political representation, standard for the picture book insertion. All of the illuminations in the cycle are painted over rulings which anticipate. See here the lines of the vertical cover to the painting, and the text lines below the miniature have been connected across the cover by painted lines. Furthermore, the John the Baptist cycle begins the 29th gathering of the manuscript, so there's a chapter at the end of the preceding gathering. Also, this after the arcade in the desert, describing the saints habit. Words of this disciple only. The script here, however, is not that of the scribe who penned the original couch words. This couch word was added after the plan was altered to make sure the body would not be changed for the later. Internal evidence thus makes it clear that this cycle is an alteration of the original scribal plan. Instead of another mass, between the end of the mass to the beginning and the beginning of the Three intervening rule places are given over in full page series to the same side. It is here then, nearly at the end of the manuscript, that the idea of the picture of the cycles took form. The ensuing four cycles each comprise a full gallery, and each gallery will be interspersed among the existing galleries, interrupting the traditional order. These, St. Catherine, the author of St. Bruno, Almost certainly the last to be completed in one letter. There is much to be said about these four major cycles, but I would like to focus on one aspect the compositional intelligence of the matter of women. Initially, the full point of the relation is viewed as a standalone image, usually because it is surrounded by text and therefore isolated from any other image. Even in the classic cycle, the images do face each other at the first couple's there is little visual connection between one and the other. In the case of taking the Christ and Christ before Caiaphas, for example, there is no visual link. Indeed, in the former, the action 
still has to take it back to the left. The ants need the right order. The facts of physics tells me I can have the left. Opposite. Caiaphas literally turns his back on the previous scene, and his massive crowd creates a formidable physical visual barrier. Only the guy who is involved in the boat, one turns back and faces Caiaphas, provide a visual link. Four major picture cycles, however, there is a palpable attempt to link one image to the next, binding the entire landscape to the particular photo. The brothers devise many ways of doing this, including the fitting use of color, light, and the mass of color on the walls. But in the St. Bruno cycle, they are living up to that. Here there is an emphatic movement from left to right, from one image to the next. In three consecutive minutes, Bruno's palace, the vision of Bishop Peter, the wish of Peter to see the Bruno in his companion. Norway is another architectural connection that brings the view in from the left and out of the next image on the right. In the third, Bruno points the way by winding path that leads to the hermit solitary life in the wilderness. At the very upper right is a monumental temple that leads out of the picture cycle into the next, the interior. This illumination, which represents the beam of Bishop Peter, in which he sits setting the sun, foretelling the arrival of Bruno and his six companions, architectural connections, enter from the left and lead out of the right into the next image, in which Peter leads Bruno and his companions. Again, the man continues in from the left, and the tall barrel followed by a bit of classic wood behind the vision indicates the exit from this scene into the next, the scene of the Cistercian monument entering the now completed Holy Church Bridge. Here the economy of composition and refinement of power hallmarks of these narrative compositions are striking. The pointed mountain at the base of the tall, tall portal looks back at an ancient dwelling, while the tessellated backdrop dwells the four iron arches above the head of the composition. The large scale figures form much of the picture here, and all but one are clothed in white robes, delicately fully modeled in gradations of white to pale gray. All are rendered photometrically, each inhabitant of the same space, bringing a cloud or a spatial relationship as the figure of figures move in a diagonal towards the front. The episodic detail of the monk holding up the cow, his cow, has a note. As they approach, they begin to lean forward. The cloud of heads arranged their hands in front, while the foremost figure disappears into the court. This portal is so similar to that pictured in the Departure from Paris that the earlier renderings could also be understood as a vision of the Twelve Bridges through the windows. There are other overarching visual conceits that heighten the narrative coherence of the cycle. Each for example commences with a contemplative scene, a pattern of extenuous embrace of the unseen thing. The Bruno cycle begins with the art, the sculpture, the scripture, and out of the road with the saintly coming of faith and faith and philosophy. Likewise, the cycle all close with the surprise thing, a composition of contrast and form, color, and rhythm with all those who are deceived. The final scenes of the Bruno cycle take us through the into the exterior of the entrance way of the Twelve Bridge, set in a minimally described landscape that most of the pictures here occupy, as it is throughout the cycle and the monumental figure. When the page is turned, however, the viewer suddenly takes flight and enjoys an aerial view of the foundation and its untitled Alpine surroundings, which exude a peaceful serenity. In the foreground, four monks enjoy the leisure activity of only one. Birds go overhead, and the chapel can be seen on a distant mountain peak. The verdant village is rendered in green, arranging in curves, but no one is discernibly heard. In conclusion, certainly one of the reasons that these ambitious picture book cycles are out of the ordinary is that they provide a broader canvas for the nimble poets to experiment with color and the sense of life, to refine models. 